Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and welcome to my June greenhouse update and I'm going to make this as full an update as I possibly can. So it's a June evening and I've waited for the glare of the daytime sun to die down a little bit so we can get the best filming possible out here in the greenhouse and you may notice my voice change, the quality of the sound change as I come into the greenhouse and I'm just back from my holidays where I was away for two weeks and my daughter was watering the greenhouse and a very good job she did too. I only have very few casualties. I'm now turning all the way around just to give you a complete view of where I'm standing in the greenhouse before we get stuck into the nitty gritty of individual plants. And today I spent the day just watering in the greenhouse and tidying up a bit, removing dead leaves, that kind of thing. And I'm quite pleased with the result. So I guess, having done my full turn there, what we should next do is take a look up here on this side of the staging because that's where all the pretty things are at the moment. Now I do have some stunners to share with you at the moment and I kind of can't wait to get stuck into it. So I'm starting here at the end of the staging here and I'm going to try and just kind of be a bit disciplined so I don't leave anything out. And we'll start over here with this pelagonium, rosebud pelagonium, that's just coming into bloom. Now this one got quite a bit, lost quite a few leaves over the winter, but I removed the flowers before I went away because I didn't want the plants to struggle with minimal watering when my daughter was doing it and trying to produce flowers at the same time. So it's just coming into flower at the moment and this is a really nice one. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm going to put the names up on the screen because to actually remember all these names, woo, it's tricky. So moving over here, I guess our first port of call is this little cactus which has a crown of buds here, not fully opened, but looking really quite well. And I love the way the buds are in on that white base, almost like a bed of white. Really, really pretty. And flanked here by the Echeveria Duchess of Nuremberg, I think, which is going to flower for me for the first time. Some nice buds coming there. And at the back, I think we just have two unnamed pelagoniums. The one on the left, it's an ivy leaf type. And I'm not sure I have a name for that. If I have a name for it, I'll put it up on the screen. Now the pelagoniums, because they were cut back before I went away, they're, you know, they're just sorting themselves out and coming into flower again. So they're not looking great, except, except, except for this stunner. My goodness, look at this. It is absolutely enormous. Now, if we look over here, there's the pot it's in. And I'm just going to stick my finger in here so you can see it's a small pot, small, small pot. Leaves looking well. A flower spike here that hasn't yet opened. And then this massive head of flowers. And this is Pelagonium Lara Envoy, which I bought from Potted Jewels Pelagonium Nursery just recently, if you will recall that video when I went over to my friend Ligas. And I am so delighted with this. My God, it's fantastic. I just love the flowers on the zone archetypes. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I just can't get over the size of these flowers on such a small plant. And the good news is that all of the ones I got from Liga are doing really, really well. This is the one with the interesting foliage. We have two flower spikes coming now, looking really, really well. And this one here, 
also with great foliage. We've got two flower spikes and up there. And I guess then if I'll just jump over here to the final one I got, which is this little cutie. Isn't it gorgeous? And look how the leaves are two-toned. We've got the very much darker leaves and the new ones are green. And in here we have some buds coming. So this one also is going to flower before very long. And I just want to say that the quality of these plants is excellent. You know, this isn't a pelagonium that you pick up cheaply at a supermarket. This is quality stuff, named hybrids and grown really well. So just again, I'd like to point out that you can buy things online from Pot of Jewels Pelagonium Nursery. And if you check out the details in this video, you can go and have a look at the website for yourself. And League is now posting within the EU, so do check that out. So what's next on my list? And do you spot this variegated beauty here? Look at the gorgeous yellow and green leaves. And if I just lift this up, <laughs> look at the flowers. Aren't they amazing? Now this is the cockatoo plant, but a variegated form. And I unboxed it. It came to me from Dibley's in the UK. I bought it this year as a small cutting, potted it up and have grown it on. And it's done really, really well. Look at the massive flowers there. And the foliage, so, so good. I think we even have some flowers down here. Really pleased I got that. Super. And it's flanked here by a, a, a no ID pelagonium, I think. And this one here is Irene. Which, or what is it called again? It's called Irsane. Irsane, or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce it. Okay, in front we have Compton's Carousel. Echeveria Compton's Carousel. And this is the one people very often ask me about and it is a beauty, a stunner. Now the front leaves here sustained some damage when I was away, I'm not quite sure why, but overall the plant is doing really well and it's pumping out new rosettes and I even have a completely cream rosette here. Which is bad news really because this is not one that can survive on its own. There's no chlorophyll on that. But I imagine because it's still attached to the mother plant, it's going to be okay because it can rely on the rest of the plant to do the work for it. But yeah, it's doing really well. Now, even these one here, look at that. There is a little bit of green in it, but not very much. And then the green ones. Actually, it's prettier with the green really, isn't it? So, so pleased with that. I think I need to pot that on. I can't remember what I've repotted this year and what I didn't. Oh dear. Okay, down here we have an unnamed little succulent I picked up at the Alpine show earlier on this year. I have no ID for it, so if anybody does, looks to me a bit like, I don't know, an Echeveria. Pretty anyway. And And then we have this lad here, which never flowers, but just grows and grows and grows. And then just moving along, we have a very variegated agave, which I got in Portugal a couple of Christmases ago. And that one is very variegated as well. And behind it, we have Syningia. And this is a fantastic, fantastic plant with the soft velvety silver leaves and orange blooms. Now it holds them proud on a caudex. Here we go, here's a caudex down here. And this plant is actually back planted with this other succulent, which I think I might remove because I think the syningia is struggling. The other one is so vigorous that um, anyway, I don't want the syningia to fail. So. I think I need to separate them and repot them separately. At the back there we have Pelagonium Lady Plymouth, the variegated one, which is looking really, really well. 
and in front chocolate rose which is the one I bought at the bloom show last year. Actually do you know what I think it was two years ago I bought this at the bloom show. Anyway when I bought it it had enormous leaves which it doesn't have anymore so I wonder how they managed to do that. And another one down at the front here which is very pretty flowers but overall the plant isn't doing extremely well it's quite defoliated. At the back we have Dudlia which is a beautiful American succulent covered in a white mealy powder and this has been repotted this year and I think it looks a lot more comfortable in this new pot. So it's a great candidate for the greenhouse because if you were to leave this out in the garden the rain would wash the mealy away and where would be the point in that? So moving down here we have a little cactus I got and I love, love, love the hairiness of this fella. He really is gorgeous. Little cactus beside it. And then this lad at front. I think this is a Hatiora. Okay, so we have now reached roughly the midway point on the shelving. And you can see my epiphyllum news right there. It's this amazing yellow beauty. Now look at that. I believe this one's Cooperi, and I think that's a false bee that's hovering around there at the moment. Anyway, he's doing no harm, but it is an absolute beauty. Now, when I came back from holidays, this was in flower to welcome me, but the flower that was in flower has since gone over. Where is it gone? Where is it gone? right down there so this is the one that was open when I came back yesterday the day before gosh it all blurs into one now and also on this same plant I have this bud here and two more at the back do you see those two at the back so five flowers in total this year which is a really really good result and it's really proving to be quite a good year for the epiphyllums isn't that a super flower? And of course, the common name for an epiphyllum is cactus orchid. <laughs> super thing. Down below we have Gasteria that have flowered. And this little fella whose name I can't remember. Can't remember. This little thing which looks to me like another Hatiora, I'll have to check out the name, um, is nearing the end of its flowering, but it was quite gorgeous when it was in flower. Leaves looking a bit pale, I think it's probably suffered from lack of water when I'm away, but yes, yeah, so it goes. And behind it we have Rimfire Pelagonium, which has amazing flowers. Really, really nice, although not as nice as the ones I got from. Potted Jewels Pelagonium Nursery. So moving along here, some more succulents looking really, really well. That is the Agave Attenuata, the smaller one. The bigger one is actually out in the garden in a pot. And here we have Aeonium, Variegated Aeonium, which is looking really well, but is in flower. And I think now that this is producing seed because if I do like this and then I don't know if we can see this see between my fingers there the little white stuff I believe that's the seed so I need to sort out about sowing this because it would be cool if the variegation came true from seed and I ended up with lots of variegated plants so I will try that. Okay, Stapelia there, big, big Stapelia that barely flowers for me, if at all. Not very happy with him. And more Gasteria down the front, which flowered amazingly. They all seem to flower this year, but they've gone over now. I've just got a couple of little flowers at the very top on that. And here we have 
there's that oniony thing I bought at the Alpine show this year and peanut cactus which flowered ever so much now it was an amazing show for a long time but I still have just two buds left so tomorrow they'll open tomorrow I love the little peanut cactus and it reminds me of when I was a kid I think we had a nature table or something in school and there was some of that cactus there and you could just break off bits and stick them on the soil and they they grew which was great very exciting okay um here's an aloe i grew from seed it's looking a bit dehydrated and behind it veltimia which i left to produce seed and we are going to check now if it has produced seed Oof. without making a big mess So I've removed all the white husky bits and brought them over to the table here, just put them in this bowl and you can see that some of them are empty, but some of them have these black seeds. This. Now these are ready for sowing straight away and it is a plant that is self-fertile so you don't need two unrelated plants to produce um, viable seed and I know this because a friend of mine took seed from my plant previously and she was successful so yeah so I'm gonna sow those I found one seed on a Hymanthus which seems to have germinated already. This is a Hymanthus natalensis. Yeah, so there's work to be done out here. And here we are back at the Veltimia. There's the plant down there. And these are the husks that I've just removed the seed pods from. So yeah, I'll just cut those off in a little while. Okay, um, beside we have the cactus, Euphorbia cactus, that I bought, that ended up having no roots a little while earlier on this year. And I'll link to that video at the end, which shows you what to do if your cactus has no roots. And this one is well rooted now. And, well, I'm not going to show you, but like if I push them, it is rooted. And you can tell it's doing well because it started to regrow its leaves, which it lost originally. So it's a good sign. And that's an update on that Euphorbia trigonum. Okay, in front we have some more pelagoniums, including this species one. And a few more, and a few more. And over here in this corner, we have a blotilla, variegated blotilla. That have never flowered for me. We also have Jacobinia, which um, seemed to die during the winter through underwatering, probably. And anyway, it's re sprouted from the roots. So that's good news. We have here a crinum that needs repotting and a monkey puzzle tree. That came to me from Lynn from Desert Plants of Avalon. Definitely needs to go into a bigger pot now. Down below we have a fuchsia boliviana. I'll show you my other two big ones in a little while. That one never got potted on but the others did. And my large epidendrum which is not doing exceedingly well but anyway there it is. And then just beside here what we have is a number of plants that are kind of summer dormant and they were put here together in a shady area and my daughter was asked not to water them. So we've got cyclamen, we've got dead horse arum, Silamadurensis there at the back and I can't really remember what. Under the table we had things that required a bit more shade. This is hard to show now including my camellia there which I think she forgot to water because it lost all its leaves 
we have the Buffon's I grew from seed. We have Cupea, which she definitely forgot to water. And the Roscoas I bought recently. Mostly the Roscoas I bought recently. And Begonia Sutherlandii over there in that corner. On top of the table we have very few things. We have my Desus, which are amazingly still in flower. Now I only have two in flower this year. And that's because they really need a repot. So that needs to be done soon. And they also need to be topped up with water because it's not very, it's a bit dry and then beside we have some bulbs that I bought recently and you saw me unbox in the video where I unboxed under a hailstorm and these are doing quite well these were in the house when I was away so that you know there would be no mistake with watering and that one's the Scylla natalensis and I, I like the leaves on that, look at that and the cross sign here, let's just have a look because this has very interesting edges to the leaves do you see it's kind of little teeth all along the edge yeah and over here we have the few plants I bought on holiday. So, um, Calancho Chocolate Soldier. It got quite damaged in the coming home in the bags, but never mind. We have some, a little Apuntia. I thought it looked really cute and it's not prickly. Um, whoops. Okay, so. We've got their Fakea, which has a codex. Always look out for the plants with the codex. They're just very interesting. And we have this thing here, which is uh, Sinigia or something like that. Sinisio. Anyway, I thought it looked really nice. And then this one here behind, which is hmm, Sinisio Kilimanjaro. Yes, Sinisio Kilimanjaro. Now all of these desperately need a repot because if we look, for example, here, what this is potted in, that looks to me like ordinary soil. And there's absolutely no way this can survive in Ireland potted in something like that. It's probably fine for the south of France where it's really, really hot. But here in Ireland, that would just rot in a second. So I'm going to pot these into something much more suitable Fairly, fairly shortly. On this side of the greenhouse we have my proteas, the ones I grew from seed. Not doing terribly well at the moment, except for this one, which has buds. I mean, I don't think they're flower buds, but it has buds. And this is here is an Aristia, which is a South African fine boss plant that should produce blue flowers in the end but has never done this thing is from South America and it has a, a, a ridiculous name mega skip yeah yeah right never flowered for me yet here at the back we have Trevisia which will eventually become a tree I have managed to get rid of the scale on it so it's clean so that um, yeah <laughs> it's doing well uh, here we have the embotrium tree which I really want to plant out in the garden ASAP I have a spot for it, it needs a sheltered spot and this is one that's borderline hardy but if it does and I know I've seen this grow locally so it should do for me if it does it has the most amazing scarlet flowers in spring and I want them I so really want them beside it we have the Davidia that Dimitri sent me from Switzerland or I think it came from Italy actually um, from the Green Nerd channel and this is an amazing handkerchief tree that flowers when it's still quite young and it's doing well and again I have a spot for that so this is another one I need to get into the ground ASAP and I'm mentioning again 
that you should really check out Dimitri's channel. It's called The Green Nerd and he posts a lot of videos about plants which he grows in his apartment. He has a green wall and he grows a variety of orchids, a variety of bulbs, he loves bulbs and lots and lots of interesting things in a most unconventional way. That's all I'm going to say for the moment. Go to the channel, check it out. Link at the end. Over here we have my Protea, King Protea with the flowers that have gone over now. We have the Yokruma, which is the Australian Brugmansia, finished flowering too. And here we have my oldest Brugmansia, it's a double white and it has lots of flowers. Look at that. They're coming. I was just about to give up on Brugmansias altogether and in fact I've gotten rid of most of the others. But this one I held on to and well, I'll get one more year out of it anyway. At the very front we have this alocasia that I grew from berries collected in Italy and the oldest leaf here is on the way out. It's looking quite not well but the new ones, green, now this probably got underwatered when I was away because it's a plant that needs a lot of water but well it's still here, it's good just a little bit of weeding. So I'm really pleased with that. I had a lot of plants, of course, when you collect your own berries, for your own seeds, you end up with a lot of plants, but now it's whittled down to just one, so I hope it does well for me. And then just up this side of the greenhouse, we have a couple of, that's Canna musifolia, the one with the banana-like leaves. We have a small Canna called Panache, I think several of those. It's a really nice one that's good for a pot. We have my Coronilla, which I pruned slightly. That desperately needs a repot too. Down below we have Echium wilpretii. These are the ones I bought at the Alpine show earlier this year. Just little seedlings really, but they have been potted on once and they're doing well. And then down below we have just a couple more succulents, aeoniums. Okay, I hope you're still with me and still eager to continue this tour. What do we have here at the top? We have an impassience that's coming into flower. Nice. We have Hymanthus coccinea, which is doing as best it ever has. It had a very short dormancy this year and sprung out leaves again, but we won't knock that. And then down below we have, oh yeah, this Drimus, this Scylla Maritima, which really, yeah, it's not doing great now. Yeah, it's not doing great. And I think that's just a hippiastrum. This is uh, Scylla Peruviana that desperately needs a repot. I'm ashamed of how <laughs> I've let that behave. Uh, down below we have Marines, also need a repot. Lots of repotting to be done here. And Hymanthus Netalensis or Scadoxis. This is the one that produced one seed, the one that you saw me tote up there in the bowl when I put the Veltania seeds in. It's flanked here by Hymanthus albifros, and this is a reliable flower in late summer or autumn really. It's difficult to show now because it's the bottom shelf. It's evergreen and it's a bit of a brute. Has always done well for me. In this corner of the greenhouse we have a couple of things. We have the Albizia tree, the summer chocolate one with the dark leaves which lives in a pot in the greenhouse and I think actually I think it suffered a little bit from dehydration when I was away and here's the other Brugmansia that I'm keeping and this is Sanguinea the orange flowering one and isn't it looking magnificent now this is planted in the ground in the greenhouse yeah and I think I actually saw a couple of buds on it. Yes, there's one in here. 
there. This is the most reliable of the Brugmansias I grow and yeah, really like this one. It takes colder, cooler temperatures than the other ones. So, well, yeah, <laughs> it's the right one for me, really. We have Tibuccina here, which is looking the worst for wear, really. It had a couple of flowers before I left. Um, it needs a bit of TLC. And then if we look out of the greenhouse here, on the step we have a couple of trees, guess. I guess we call them trees. I'm coming out now, so... All right, so this is Fuchsia Boliviana, and this is the normal one, and it has red tubular flowers, and is really the most amazing thing you're ever likely to see. And I grew from seed a few years ago, but it's never flowered. Actually, I didn't grow the red one from seed, I grew this one from seed, and this is the Alba one, and it is red and white flowers, and... This is also never flowered, but I hope if I feed it well now, this will be the year. I hope so. So, coming back inside from the fuchsias, cross your fingers for me now that they flower this year. I really would love to see them. What we haven't had a look at is this clump here and the understory on the staging, which goes up here. And I guess now we'll have a quick look at that, and that will be it for the greenhouse, really. So here we have my two frangipanis, which were potted on last year, I think. And they are producing nice leafy growth, but no sign of flowers. Now, one of them did produce flowers last year, but the flowers came kind of like at the same time of as the leaves so I suspect they're not going to bother to flower for me this year but they're looking well now these are ones I bring into the house in the winter because I think they need a 10 degree minimum not a 5 degree as I have in the greenhouse they're doing well I will have to see longer term whether it's worth persisting with such difficult plants but anyway uh, here we have Kalankoe beharensis which it's not looking great now. I repotted it, but you can see that it's got some kind of like moulds in here on the leaves. Yeah, this is all to do with my climate really, isn't it? Let's hope it responds well to the repotting. And down in the front here, we have Hymanthus humilis, which is just coming into flower. And I love my South African bulbs. So, <laughs> really like this one. And this one's in a big, big pot. There, big pot. And it now flowers every year, so I'm delighted with that. To the left of it, we have the Buffon, which you saw flower not very long ago. And it has now finished flowering. And look at the seed head it's produced. Massive, massive, massive thing. And I wonder, is it going to produce seed? Because these really do look like they're swelling, don't they? So I hope so. And it's now producing its leaves again. So that's good. <laughs> that's a good sign. Underneath the staging here, we have a no ID fern in there in the corner. Very handy for on this kind of staging. Oh yeah, and my syningia, the lipstick plant which requires a little shade. Another codex plant. There we go, and it's just about to come into flower. It's looking really well actually, look at that. Really healthy and green and yeah, really good. Unfortunately, the chrysula beside it isn't looking um, <laughs> so well. It had a couple of accidents and leaves fell off and stuff like that, you know. Shit happens. In front we have my tree tomatoes and my papayas and my solanum kitoense and aren't they all looking really really well this is the solanum these were all grown from seed looking really well the papaya 
This is mountain papaya, so a little bit hardier than the others, but these will of course uh, be trees and the tree tomato. And these all probably need potting on at this stage. And yeah, I can see roots here at the base. So I shouldn't really try and check them. They need to be moving on and getting bigger and bigger. Beside we have a grass tree from Australia, also from seed. That really is a long haul. And as I look now, we have scale on it. Really? How could such a spiky thing get scale? Yeah. Opportunistic little angels, aren't they? Alright, well, I need to have a bit of a clean of that. Uh, we have a Sanchez here. The bigger one has gone and been planted in the garden. Behind we have some Aeonians from Seed. And they're doing well. Kalankoe, a lot of these things really need potting on now. Like these Aloas, see it's very pale and yellow. That is bursting out of the pot at this stage. Really, really needs potting on. These are also more Aloas I grow from Seed and just haven't gotten around to potting them on and over here some more cactusy things yeah and then my epiphyllum section where I have a lot of epiphyllum cuttings always look like crap don't they with those <laughs> really ugly leaves and then begonias over here so here we have this one here silver one looking really nice and here's the one that I gifted to Zane not very long ago really nice it's not sycamensis it's one newly discovered science that hasn't yet been named so it only has a number which is what the explorers do apparently before they give something a name and this one here finally and one final thing for fans of Boo Boo who were wondering where she is at the moment, she's actually out in the garden for the summer. She says she prefers it out there, much cooler. She's having a bit of a laugh in one of the borders. But the breaking news is that I have a second Boo Boo, a flying Boo Boo, kindly sent to me by Jean in Washington in the, new, in the US. And thank you so much Jean, I absolutely love it. And I love the way the metal has tarnished, as metal does with age. I think that's just a beautiful touch. It's a chemical reaction with the weather. And I think things like that are just so amazing because it shows what time does to us and how natural substances react. And I think it's just wonderful. Look at his little tail. I think what we'll do with Boo Boo, flying Boo Boo, is place her here for the moment with the epiphelm. Thank you so much Jean, such a wonderful, really kind gesture. So there we go, that I think covers the entirety of the greenhouse. but. Oh, I just thought there's something else I didn't show you. So if you've been watching my videos, I'm sure you want an update on these babies. Let's check out the Insetti bananas. So we just have to head over here. Around the table. So we're now over here in the border, beyond Joshua's tree here, and this is the spot where I left my Ensete bananas, the ones I propagated from killing the parent plant, and I'll link to that video at the end. Now when I was going away I didn't want to leave them in the greenhouse because they would fry, and there were too many to put in the house, 
for my daughter to water so I stuck them in here in the shade under a tree and you know what I think they've done really really well look at these ones really really big now I think over here maybe we have one casualty here on that one perhaps two but the others are all very much alive it has been wet when I was away it was quite wet so yeah that's really a result and back we go into the greenhouse just to wrap up this video okay I hope you enjoyed this greenhouse update I think a very comprehensive and full update on the plants I'm growing in the greenhouse and those of you who saw my videos last year will note that there are fewer plants in here this year and that's because I've gotten a rid of a lot of the large ones. Some of them are planted in the garden but the gingers for example I got rid of. They, I sold most of those. So it's more kind of like succulents, pot plants, a few pelagoniums and a few more interesting things and generally speaking it's a lot more manageable than it was before and yeah I think that's probably better. Okay so thank you for watching. I hope you like this video. There I am, <laughs> my reflection. And if so, give it the thumbs up and check back for lots more updates. Okay, bye for now.